Okay, here we go. Big us, us everyone. Us, hope everyone's well. Thank you for listening to the Kyokushin Shuffle. Uh, what a special month it is. And um, I have an almighty guest. Uh, I've been in contact here with uh, our guest from Denver in the USA. But ladies and gentlemen, please can I introduce you to Fuku Kancho, Mike Ninomiya. Uh, how are you? How's everything going? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. And um, I have my own podcast and I yeah. said you have a podcast. So I thought, wow, this is, uh, yeah, we have a, a similar. Indeed. Um, yeah. Connection as such. Yeah. yeah. And, and thank you for accepting, you know, we both have been in contact and we're, you know, we we're obviously enjoying each other's platforms as such. And it was a, it was a no brainer to be honest. And to see the work that you've been doing of late, um, I was, I was, yeah, fantastic to get you on. So thank you for that. Yes, thank you. How are you? How's things going in Denver? Good. Um, we, um, we're still training like with a lot mm. of restrictions and mm. stuff like that. And um, I think, you know, for us, at least the, the pandemic has, um, you know, I think we've tried to make the best of it mm. as, uh, as a family, as an organization and like anyone. Right. And yeah, indeed. Um, I'm trying to bring out the best. Um, so. Yeah. But you've kept yourself you've kept yourself pretty busy uh, in respect of again you know you're doing a podcast you've got your online training programs which we can go into detail for all the listeners you've got to check it out and 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 follow uh, Fuku there but then also um, the 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 online training avenue has you know has taken its 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 realm you know uh, uh, dojo from home or dojo from wherever now it it literally is the case isn't it yeah right um, it's definitely something that's um, catching on. I, I, I've mm. been doing Zoom classes mm -hmm. um, maybe four four years. Okay, four years now with people that just I knew couldn't train in person. Mm. Yes, and so um, you know, it's just right away, just knowing that that was where it was going to go, and knowing mm. how to how all that works. It was um, I felt like a, a, in a good space, I guess. Yeah. To do that. Yeah. Well, I break the ice always. And, and, and again, for the audience that I've got mostly here in Australia and in New Zealand and UK and Europe, you know, the, the biggest one, and, and this is a real fascinating guest I have, um, people, because there is a pedigree and a background here that's uh, quite impressive. And how did martial arts, and it's the question that's just started off, you know, flowing around the world here, how did martial arts start in your life? But I've got a pretty good idea how it did, but uh, could you share it with most of us? Yeah. Yeah. Um... So my, my dad was, uh, came to the New York, actually, in the U.S. Uh, in the 1970s. I want to say, what, 76 or something like that. Okay. Um, and he, it was actually par part of the uh, documentary Fighting Black Kings. And so the, uh, the, the film of that was very, um, you know, it was, it was pretty legendary in its yeah. time and for Kyokushin. And um, there were f parts separately that were filmed of my dad and then parts of my mom. Right. And I think just growing up in my head, that's, uh, that was before I was born, but that was like the, yeah, uh, indeed. the romance or something. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. And again, for those, uh, uh, Fuku's father is none other, none other than, can you reveal just to, so everyone can understand? Yeah, my father is Joko Ninomiya. So he was a 1978 All Japan uh, Kyokushin champion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and he uh, founded Enshin. There we karate have it. And uh, the Sabaki Challenge. So yeah. He's, um, you know, they've been established since uh, 1988. Correct. And um, you know, my dad moved out to Denver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, which is, which is uh, again, there you have it again, you know, in summarizing a massive chapter there in your beginning and your start, but uh, to give everyone some perspective, that's the history of Fuku Kancho here. And we have to, uh, I guess, deep dive a little bit into this because your beginning of, you know, being in New York as well. And how long did you live there? And was it starting to be, you know, something that you were just doing as a kid and then it just all of a sudden teenage years and then it was just, hey, this is, this is just happening. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, I, I was born in Denver. Okay. And my parents got divorced. I want to say I was like one or something. I don't remember. Right. Um, but then I was, I was back in New York and I grew up in New York. Um, 
not far away from uh, uh, New York City, so like mm -hmm. very, very close. But I had a nice blend of, um, you know, different scenery and environments mm. as well as friends. Mm. So, um, but uh, yeah, I think my first memories of uh, karate was my mom teaching uh, mm. in a, a gym. Oh, yeah. uh, it was above a weightlifting gym. And I just remember it at a very young age, like maybe one, two years old, just like sitting there um, and, and watching. Wow. It seemed like forever, but they were just kept doing yeah. too long. And, <laughs> it was um, you know, so like, I just remembered. Yeah. That, you know, and that was like a very close thing with my mom because she was working right. a lot. And, at, I, and when I would get to see her at night, she was okay. then teaching and we would be home together. But um I started training pretty young. There weren't, yeah. she didn't teach kids classes. There were just yes. straight up adult. Yes. And, um, I remembered, you know, doing all the Kihon and, you know, just really, really young. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, passionate well, about it. And she said, no, you know what? If you're going to learn karate, uh, I'm not going to teach you. Uh, oh, you yeah. have to learn from your dad. <laughs> and, um, and she yeah. put me in judo. Oh, right. So I, at a pretty young age, I started doing uh, judo, yeah. which is those, those. Many, well, like kind of like wrestling with yep. ipon. It's like a those. or you know newaza ground, mm. ground. So I um, my my judo teacher was the uh, he was sent here from the Korokan and also yeah. from the uh, 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 Tomiki Aikido. Okay. So he, he was one of the highest ranking in, in Tomiki. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so you were you were instilled quite early, as they say, quite early you instilled with what, um, you know, the attributes of, you know, the family, the heritage of what was happening. And I guess it was just, it, as you, as we gestured, it's in the blood, isn't it, listeners? You know, there's no way around it for a uh, country here. So, you know, as you're progressing in this, you know, your family's involved heavily, you've got, you know, amazing connections all around you, good people, uh, in, in respect of, again, the, the integrity of, of the arts and understanding and, and the background, you know, there was also the child, the, the 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 boy, the boy of Mike. You know that might have liked uh, other things. How did you, how did you? You know how some parents say, no, no, we never pressured him into doing this. We never pressured him into this, or never pushed him that way. How did you grow up with that side of it? You know, you surely had other passions, or was it just this? Yeah, I did. I, um, you know, I, I had a ch challenging education when I was okay. very young, and I. Um, I, they almost put me into like special education right? because uh, you know what they call is like, Oh, you have ADD. And you sure. know, I really didn't want to be there. I wanted to be training and, right, right. and like very physical. Right. Um, but the moment I realized um, that I could apply myself mm -hmm. in school, um, I started to go in that direction a little bit, you know, I started to educate myself and um, you know, so I, I, I I actually went to engineering school. I have a degree in applied mathematics. Wow. I was almost, when I was, when I graduated um, in my early twenties, I, I was going to be uh, an actuary. Okay. So it's like the people that do um, like forecasting and probabilities and stuff. Yeah, like right. That. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, um, I let go of a pretty well-paying job at that time right. to, to become an uchideshi. Yes. And, pursue martial arts and you know so I think it's the pull was really like I felt on my from my grandparents really to be the first one in my family to go to college I say yeah and so I kind of felt like yeah you know, yeah yeah I, this is what I should be doing but uh -huh. you know, I always knew what I wanted to do and um you know I think I, I don't use applied math now but it, it's <laughs> well. helped me to it helps you to it's problem solving of course no that was the angle and and nice segue into that you know you you also mentioned your uchideshi you know side of things and again for the listeners when i just spoke to uh, kancho earlier i just mentioned that there's there's a lot to talk about obviously and i've got a lot of people that go do three hours do four hours 
let's just we got to appreciate everyone's time and and the angle that we head towards is 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 of the luxury of the guest. So with that is your uchi deshi angle. You know, you've you, you've graduated, you've got a degree, you've put some hard years into you know a, a, another angle where you were intellectually capable of you know doing really well, and then you've decided to do uchi deshi. Can you give us an give us that um, moment, I guess, of how that went for you? Yeah, I, I mean, this is this is really talking in hindsight, and I, at that young age, I was very um, ignorant. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, I think at a young age, I, I felt like um, needing to be have stability, and and almost wanting to provide for my mom and take care of my mom, and you know, like take. I, I had this sense of like you know, like wanting to take care of, of course. my family and stuff sure. like that. Sure. And um, I think it was like a decision of like, well, do I follow my heart or do mm. I follow my head? <laughs> right. And um, I think following your heart is always the best. Okay. Um, you know, thing. And, and, and again, it was just my, my ignorance at that age. Um, really, I, you know, but probably a good ignorance because I wasn't thinking too far. <laughs> It's, it's, it's part of life, as they say. And, you know, you never know. There's, there's a saying, you never, never know if you never, never go. And, uh, you know, so you, you venture into this. How were you training? How did you, you know, you've committed now, obviously. And you're into the, I mean, you know, you're, a, uh, excuse my number, but you're a four-time world champion within Enshin and Sabaki. Was it was was a title already in there? Or were you training and then it was, okay, here we go. I did. I think I, I think I did. <laughs> I had one once or twice. Nice. That time. And um, yeah, but, and then afterwards it was, you know, it was a different kind of challenge. Yeah. What was it? What did, what's the challenge for someone that wins a world title in the best art, you know, one of the toughest arts as well in this. And then you set yourself what, what did you set yourself? You know what I mean? Um, well, I, yeah, I think it's a complicated question, but I think if you, if you do win, mm. people want people, people look at the person that won sometimes and they want to get that person. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a blessing and a curse because then sometimes <laughs> they don't look at the, the people that you have to be really careful of. Yes. Yes. Um, but yes. I think it's also a blessing because you have to, it, it allows you to reinvent yourself. Correct. Yeah. You have to kind of be a, like a Madonna mm, mindset, mm, you know, it's like, Oh, oh uh, the different, it's a different thing. And yeah, I think it's, um, it, it's a, it's an investigation in and of itself to mm. renting because you are, a, you become a target in some oh, sense. Sure. Yeah. And when, and with, with that being, you know, the target, you, what, what was draw, you know, what was driving you, you know, many people have the, um, you know, so many factors of, of being driven by, again, being three time, four time, whatever the time, if it is that, or just to, like you said, reinvent yourself. But who's also, again, you know, mentoring you, guiding you, supporting you, you know, in the, the listeners here all have, you know, as such a, a shihan, a sensei that, that, you know, pushes them, you know, and the push of, of the, of the usno seishin as such, you know, that never give up because, you know, what, what was the angle that you were con seeing or was it a battle maybe at times? Um, what, yeah, it, it's kind of complicated because yeah, my dad is my, um, you know, my growing up, he was my hero. Of course. Um, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't grow up with him. So I saw him in a, I saw him in a different perspective. He was more than a dad. It was almost like a, right. um, you know, like how many people see him is, is kind of a, of a course. different figure of course i think um you know wanting to uh, train in a way that i would i i, I wouldn't let him down all right and, and then and then a breaking point is also where it's actually not letting myself down mm. guard and and you know and that, so on a deeper level i think that was definitely an influence yeah you know, like knowing that I stood for something else yes. than myself, but then I also have to stand for myself. Yeah. My dad can go on the mat and fight with me. Like, yeah. it's not like 
tag team. Like, oh, like, <laughs> you know, okay, so it's okay. like, you know, it, it is a solitary, like, and that's it. Like, wow. it's just me. At the end of the day, it's me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in terms of style, too, I did have a, a, a very um, powerful and significant influence from his name was Sensei Yuji Iwakura. Okay. And so, uh, you know, his sabaki was uh, his textbooks, you know, it's like the movement. Right. Um, and so I really, uh, I really took that into consideration, you know, the stylistic ap- approach and, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> when you, when you see, um, I can I think the first thing that just came to my mind then in, in tapping into your knowledge and exp- expertise and so forth is, you know how the again the the mainstream has obviously been the the UFC or one championship right in in mixed martial arts and the conversation now is well there's many but one of them being that the where do, where does each style fit right you know where there's grappling there's wrestling there's jujitsu stance striking and all the above. My thing is when we when I see this mainstream is where where's Enshin where is where meaning they're they're so powerful such a strong art such a powerful um, facet of mixed martial arts do you see it in that language do you use that type of vernacular as such or am I you know is it's not in that sentence at all? Um, I guess at 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 this point in my life and, and understanding um, it's all kind of a game. Okay. It's all like, okay. Like I play, I, I have, a, I used to play a lot of chess, but right. it's like, Oh, I play uh, chess 360 or I play this variation of chess mm-hmm. and that variation or someone plays like go. Right. You know? So like there's so many different games out there. And if you really like, the game you're playing mm. and it's it's it that's what that's the art i think i see i see where you're um, going yeah that's the art of it and then you know whether or not you want to collaborate and play a different game that's completely up to you um, yeah yeah some games are more popular and some games are more like oh well i don't kind of get it but when you geek out I, I use the word geek out sure sure yeah it's good to know yeah see so many it's an art right yes and it's yes. hard to kind of, um say this art or that art and i'm not sure if i answered your question no but i no i know i tapped into something which is uh, you, you you have because you're saying and that's what, what i was trying to see was the language of someone from you when someone says um look Enshin karate for example compared to others th- that's how you see it you know in a simpler way uh, or how yeah, are you yeah. seeing it that's super hard for me because <laughs> i um i say like i don't know what other people do oh right? okay someone could be doing kyokushin mm-hmm. with Enshin. yes like like i mean they could be doing all for all intents and purposes what i'm doing right the the name they call it Kyokushin or they call it Ashihara. Of and I say like, I don't know what they do because I'm not them. I'm not, I don't, mm. I don't like, I can't, I can't, you can't compare two things because you, I don't do that. Right. Um, and so, Oh, that's just the people say, Oh, that's just like this. Yes. Yes. The, it's, it's kind of um, the essence is not the same. Right. And you, you don't yeah. know what they're doing and why they're doing it. Yes. And, and that you've just, you've just answered it. And for listeners, what I was alluding to was, you know, he, uh, Kantra just mentioned it. So there's Kyokushin, Enshin, uh, Ashihara and Kudo, right? And they're, they're, you know, there's the conversation of, oh, that's a base of, there's Kyokushin in there. And there is a whole bunch of beautiful things in each one of them. And that looks similar, that look familiar, but you use the big word then, and it's the essence. The essence of each one is, you know, Totally yeah. different. Mm. Right. They say, oh, you have a, uh, we have the same color hair. Uh, we both <laughs> kind of have some facial. Oh, we're the same. We're, yeah. we, we are the same, mm. but there's something quite unique about it. Yeah. Too. Yeah. You know, That's special. Different and I'm a little different, but you know, it, there's something. Good reminder, the essence listeners and the, and the, you know, the importance of, yeah, there's, there's difference in there. And, 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 you know, 
going to, you know, there are elements of what I've watched from yourself and, and your father and, and a lot of the practitioners in Enchin into the sabaki side of the grabbing and the, you know, when I just see your hand moving there, the automatic movements of what, you know, a takedown can do. And we practice them. I, I introduce them in my dojo here and, and we practice certain practice, meaning not as lengthy and as long as you guys, uh, your students and so forth do in Enchin around the world. What is a percentage in Enshin as such, if I can get you here, is striking, grappling, you know, what, is, there, is there a uh, pillar for each or do, do you gesture it as striking we focus on, grabbing, or is it just one big nice sum of everything? Um, well, I think what, what you're alluding to almost is the... Um, the, the transactions and how transactions work. So if I was just to start out and then just come up and grab you, right. yeah. probably I get hit. I probably get <laughs> someone would hit, punch, kick me. Sure. So you almost have to respect the distance. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a long range kicking distance. Us. And then shorter range, now close. Us. Now it's actually grappling range. And with in there, there's still strikes. Us. Totally. And, so, um, and we just added Niwaza now. So now everything is, you could do everything and go down to the ground and then there's no striking. Right. right. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's more like a conversation where yeah, 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 long yeah. distance is like, yes, no. It's like black and white. Yep. Ah, gray area. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. it gets more into feeling. Um, and it's really, uh, I think it's up to people's choice, like their mm. personality. Um, when I was younger, I felt the I felt a, a stronger desire to need the need to, to end decisively. Okay. Where people couldn't be like, oh, that's Concho's son. He won just because he's Concho. I mm -hmm. I wanted to end it. So yes. it was like clear. Evident, evident. Yeah. yeah. And so they maybe their balance, they were nervous about their balance. And then I would disengage and I try to you I would use sabaki, but it was in accordance with the balance right you know, shake, shaking up the nervous system a little bit like oh i'm not sure if i should mm. be aware of the balance or defend this attack and so that's really the the power of sabaki is yeah it's, it's in the play between striking and then grabbing and then striking and you know kind yes. of mixes up the nervous system oh, yeah it, yeah again you just yeah it, you, you can't you 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 bounce or you go in and out of different worlds pretty quickly very exactly. quickly, very quickly. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Love watching it. And, um, you know, listeners, I'm, I'll put some links up with Country in his heyday and, and even till now. But um, Country, you know, so you've, so do you factor now after being so successful as a fighter and, you know, you're teaching, I, I'd like to tap into that angle a little bit. I think it's such a um, big thing of, of your level as well. When, when you're, you're teaching uh, your classes uh, how are you, what, what is some of the, the I guess, um, main elements that you see yourself as a teacher in, you know, the, the attributes that you bring to, to your style of teaching? Um, I guess what I'm, what I believe in, in, in as a teacher is to teach people how to think. Um, I right. don't want to teach just techniques. Mm -hmm. I want to create the, the proper mindset in students so they are not robots. They don't just say, oh yeah, do this technique and this is the thing. Yes. Um, I want them to understand the technique, of course, is important, What's... but the feeling behind it, mm. the emotionality behind it, the personality of the technique. Um, I want them to know how to persevere and use a, like a non-quitting attitude. Yeah. Um, and then also persistence, which means they're going to do it over and over and over again to the point where their wisdom is embodied. It's yeah. they, when they walk, they're always training. How they see a situation is they can apply the technique to this situation in life because they didn't just learn the technique. Mm. They learned the, everything, the essence behind it. There's a saying like the, a rabbit hole or, or deep dive, you know, the, you, can't, you don't just see the layer of it. You have to, you know, get into the rabbit hole or, or really, really dissect it to a, good, to a point where you are, you know, one with it. 
Yeah. I, I kind of use the phrase, it, it sounds kind of silly, but yeah, uh, it's uh, um, be, becoming obsessive. Like we want to yeah, be obsessive. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, totally. So, That's a beautiful one. Way, you're washing your hands so much, your hands getting dry. Like, yes. That's a compulsive. Oh, I totally get it. I totally get it. Get obsessive about something that is positive or, or healthy for us. Yeah, no, you, and 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 you've just you know that 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 language there, and if for me at the minute as a teacher is 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 has slid into kata and how in kata and kyokushin kata I'm trying to um, gesture to the students that there is ippon kumite in kata, there is goshinjitsu from uh, Shian Bobby Lo in kata, there is kumite in kata, there is self defense. In cut, there is all these facets. Every single time you move, there is is going to be something in each one of those moves. They just have, so you have to be good at your key, you know, all the above, or you have to tick all these things so that the kata is fully ingrained. And then it takes so much into your, you know, um, training because you see the students that try that think of the kata that do it, and they're dripping sweat after one. You know, how, do, do, does Enshin focus a fair bit on, on kata? Our kata is um, pretty, pretty interesting. It's pretty, I guess, unique, I would say, mm -hmm. without, having, without saying comparatively. But um, I want to say something that may be not understood too well. <laughs> but it. the Enshin kata is actually very traditional mm -hmm. in its own way because... Before kata, before there was something called kata, mm -hmm. a student, it was, it was always one-on-one -on -one training. Correct. And the student got specific techniques to their aptitude, to their constitution, mm -hmm. like their, their fighting abilities. Ability, yep. Personality. And so they would just practice applications and they would do the one application a zillion times. They would walk Plus. home and do and there was no kata the right. kata was in doing the thing over and over to the point where it's usable the kata as we see it today where it's a set of you know sequence things, correct yes yeah, sequence that came when teachers had to go out and travel That's right. yes and when they travel they're like oh okay i'm not going to be able to see them let me show them the choreography let's get yes. the choreography then oh this one movement there's five applications and so it was almost reverse engineering the thing so that it could go and check yes add more to it tweak it come back. Mm -hmm. check mm -hmm. tweak it come back and so over time with diligence yes. they would see this movement that they didn't know what it was mm. and then it would, it would arise it would inform in the real thing um so our kata is um it's sometimes considered not traditional because mm -hmm. we're in fighting stance. Yeah. And, yeah. And then it's, a, it's, it's, it, there's no interpretation. It's like, there is a right punch coming, parry, punch, Boom. come back. And there's, there's no, my dad is like that. He's very, yes, 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 yes. Not to say yes. that it's very like A to B. A to B. Yeah. 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 And so the whole kata, uh, the ancient katas are like that. There's only one interpretation, really. To yeah, ichigeki by the sounds of it, just get get boom, finish. Mm. Now that's interesting. Right now, I, uh, oh, okay. go for it. Yeah, I, I really appreciate um, the the um, other kata, like mm -hmm. I'll say traditional kata, but you know I do appreciate that because you can see the the structures of those kata, the structure is really where um, that's the essence of it, like the, the foundation. Mm -hmm. oh, um, and then doing that foundation to the point where it's it becomes part of the person, mm, part yeah. of their structure, right? Yeah. Uh, and that, that's sometimes where people miss in, in Enshin is their foundation because they're in a fighting stance, they have to really know the, you know, what's happening in the stance and how to yeah. transition weight from fighting stance is easier than transitioning weight from sanchin dachi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kiba dachi, or, sanchin. You know, yeah. These stances that you kind of don't use in thing, but if you could do it there, then you could do it yeah. here with greater ease. 
So yeah. I like to say, I look at, you know, always the things. Yeah, yeah the, no good. No, that's good. That's cool. Yeah, uh, you know the 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 side of um, the again in in your teaching uh, component. You know, your Enshin has how, how many members slash in, excuse me if I caught you off guard around the world or, or students around the world. How many are there, roughly? Yeah, no, good. I, I haven't stopped to take a good count, but yeah, we have a, maybe about a hundred something, hundred eight schools around in different countries. Okay. And um, yeah, the process, I guess, to becoming an instructor is not favorable, right? Um, because it does um, it does take a, a very in, long investment in time, mm. um, in rank. Also, it's it's not like a clear okay position. So, um, but yeah, that's I I I really admired my dad's mindset behind that because he <laughs> says always the quality is you know, never sacrifice that. And, you know, if someone doesn't want to come to Denver mm. and, and live with us essentially for a, a, a decent amount of time, you know, that's. So, so what is, what is the, if you don't mind sharing with us a little bit there of, of that, that uh, prerequisite I'm, I'm probably is what I'm hearing is that there's a prerequisite. Yeah. And honestly, it just changed with the pandemic. Oh, of course. <laughs> You know, right now it's it's a it's a two year program where it takes two years to basically, okay. you know, huh, yeah, cover get, cover all the cover yeah, the cover what you, yeah because yeah it, like like we talked about before it's it has a like like a lot of dynamic elements mm. to it mm. you know so so does a student can a student train for five six years. Is it a similar process to Kyokushin naively? Is it, you know, you can get to your brown and then your black, your shodan, you can achieve that within that that time frame. But then it when to become a official or qualified engine instructor, there is a big component now. Now now you need to tick this one as well. Yeah, right. Gotcha. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting, isn't it? Because you know the 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 different um, you know the the word that gets used, and 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 let's segue a little bit here to to some of the the beautiful work you do online, and 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 um, I'd love you to share, you know, you know, take your time as such in regards to that, or you know, where you want to head with it, because the 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 angle here that uh, Fuku Kancho has is is quite a, a, a opening um, avenue of. Uh, again, you know, the word I'm looking for, uh, probably you've got a better word than me, but it's, it takes you to another le another level. That's probably the way I saw it. And, you know, can you share with us a little bit more of what you do on that, on that, on that angle? Um, you're talking about like online training? The, 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 the course, like it's not a course, it's those, um, the, the elements of theory and application and um, mindset and, and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I use a lot of, um, like, Musashi, like mm. the Book of Five Rings. Us. I, um, I really looked at that as a framework of um, not only on the mat, but, you know, trying to make it applicable in so many different things like he did in the original book. Um, I do have a background in Taoist energetics, so I... Wow. I um in in the yoga community uh, qigong, which means energy work. Um, I have a background in that, and I teach mm. teach people how to how to do that. And so I see a lot of times the the characteristics mm. of a person and how it relates to fighting, and almost constitutionally, like what people are bringing, and also what they're fighting themselves in some right. sense. Yeah, internally and such. And know what, you know, for instance, like if you're a teacher, you would know how to aid that person and help them. You would know, you know, certain things. And as a competitor, you would know how to take the person down from right. the same thing. And it's based on health. It's, it's looking at the mm. understanding that you're fighting. You don't want to fight yourself. Your health your well-being, um, the way that you train should be for health and longevity mm -hmm. versus, man, I can do this when I'm young, but when I'm old, this right. is not 
<laughs> this is not smart. Sure, uh, sure. So, you know, when we train with this kind of mindset, we're really training is the guiding system and then making sure that the form and the structure is appropriate so that your mind can know, you know, go to where there's less tension. Right, um, right. And where, know exactly where to be. Like mm. I talk about that as the guidance system. That's it. And I want to train the guidance system so that the techniques work themselves. Um, there's a lot of people that, they have so many techniques, they can do it in class, but you put them under stress yes. or you put them with person A mm -hmm. and it doesn't work and person B, it works. Why? Mm. It's, it's a, these, these little things. Yeah. So it's very geeky and no, a lot of I, martial I, artists, it's, it's totally like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine, but no, I, I got to be honest with you. If it's, it's, it's not, it's not geeky. It's, it is again. And, and I, I brought this up and, and what I'm bringing up is, is the other element. You're bringing another element that is not being tapped into or being focused on or, you know, whatever word you want to put there. But that's how I saw it. And that's when I was looking at it and reading some of your stuff, I was like, yeah, this is an important angle or again, element that we focus so much attention on X, Y, and Z that it there still needs to be a avenue here that we all need to look into and that mindset side of it. And more so the way you structured it around Miyamoto Musashi and the Book of Five Rings because, you know, listeners out there, if you don't have it, uh, you got to get, you know, the, 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 the call that my Xi'an made for us approaching our green belt was, if you don't have that book, don't bother coming back in, you know, as a, as a courtesy of saying, you have to now know what's ahead and understand. And even that book for most of us, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, listeners, it is overwhelming, you know, and like you just said, uh, it's starting to get a little bit tricky here or, you know, and it's like, no, no, deep dive or get into that. So, you know, when you saw that, did you see it as, as an element or what did you see it as? Um. Well, <laughs> yeah, this is, it's, this takes me into more my own um, Go for it. personal journey. Like I didn't just like start. Yeah. That. It was really out of, um, um, you know, when I was 24 years old, I, something kind of clicked in my head or didn't sure. click, over, but I started to see things um, mm -hmm. that I wasn't quite prepared for. I see. Um, and you know, um, emotionally, I wasn't ready to handle it. It was, okay. I was seeing things that hadn't happened yet. Wow. And I was seeing things in people that was very accurate, but I didn't quite know where it was coming from. And Interesting. So it's, and I wasn't doing any practices, so to speak, to like, you know, I wasn't doing LSD or like sure, doing sure, crazy sure. meditations. It was just like, whoa, like, okay, this, this is not what I was aware of. And um, but I commit suicide when I was um, oh, I'm 24 and I was, I was by myself. No one knew. And it was oh, a miracle no. found me. Um, and I was brought back to life oh and it was God, at that amazing. time that I realized, um, even though I was doing martial arts at the time and mm. like I, before I had a, I was, I won two times. Wow. I didn't understand the, what I had on a, you know, I didn't know how to use it in a certain way. Okay. And so when I started to understand, I guess the, the interpersonal part and the, the, the things that I was kind of neglecting. Sure. Um, and it just kind of hit me all of a sudden. Wow. Then I, then I started to, it, things made sense. I started to, I, the book made, wow. Oh, I see. Now, book of five rings. It's interesting. He starts, with the earth book mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then he goes to the water then the fire then right. the air he chose that sequence in particular because that's the death cycle oh. right and that was written at the end of his life yes, the first thing that we feel when we're towards the end of our life or even when awesome. i was sitting there dying is you lack the ability to move your body you don't you feel like you need help moving awesome. then is your emotions kick in Oh, it's you start to think of all of the feelings and everything mm. like that. Then the next thing is fire. 
the phrase life flashes before your eyes, that's the fire element. You know, you start to see all of the, all of the events are sure. going like this and everything that you have a regret to, or it's, right. it's, it's, that's a trigger. It's yes. a charge. And our consciousness wants to stick to that. Yeah. And the very last thing is the air element is your last breath. Oh my goodness. So right. It's interesting. He chose the, the destructive thing. And when we're born, it's the opposite. You take your first breath. Yeah. Mm. All of you know, so it, it goes into all of those. Fascinating. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I appreciate you sharing a little bit there. And 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 if yeah, well, what if you know? I don't know how to put it, but um, sorry to hear you got to that that state in your life at that time. But you know, I, I think um, you know, I, I say this with um, the utmost. Um, uh, uh, what's the word like? Thankfulness. Of but sometimes, like you know needing to like learn the hard way and like have a, 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 a traumatic thing to really get, you know, how beautiful and precious life is. And, um, you know, so it's, I wake up every day and, and yeah. you know, I don't want to, I don't want to glamorize that, but it's, that no. was a turning point. No. And in me, in my life. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and of course, of course. And again, you know, that this is the chat and what a fascinating part. And thank you for sharing that bit in respect of, you know, how you see it, you know, it's, again, listeners out there, you know, you, we, we're all going through certain things. And, and again, COVID has taken, um, you know, a whole, a whole uh, element uh, of by surprise, you know, and um, you know, yeah. Thank you for sharing that, I guess, you know, you, go for it. Yeah, I, I mean, I was gonna say like, um, sure. you know, the the veil that is lifted when we see things as they are, um, that I believe is what martial arts helps us to. It, we go into conflict, mm -hmm. things that we don't like to see, things of ourselves and people, we voluntarily enter conflict so that we can find a resolution. Yes, and so I think you know, on a deeper level, this is. Um, a kind of a hidden blessing in the pandemic um, mm -hmm. and, and learning that and, and obviously you know pe people are taking their lives and, and things yeah. like that the tragedy behind it is um, you know I, I, it's 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 very uh, delicate you know so to oh. understand yeah and I'm and, you know I use the um I'm via my social media and, and, and again in talking openly here you know my social media is a platform for me to share with others positive energy positive mindset okay. and and my my tool is kyokushin my tool is the dojo my tool is my health and fitness and many are seeing it and then contacting me about it going oh i didn't know you were this or this or this meaning years or advanced like that and I went into a deep dive over this last six months personally going, why is it taken this long? And again, it's social media at the minute, but why is it taken this long for many that are following me or, or, or aware of me to not understand or not see that side of me? Mm -hmm. And then it took me by, you know, a bit of a ego checking going, no, I feel that the positive energy needs to be now or, you know, had to be when when it hit us in Melbourne in Victoria uh, in 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 March, I had just come back from America in Portland. I had just travelled there with my family and in the US, and then we came back, and it was it. You know, dojo closed, work gone, or you know, all the things that you're going to go. What? Now this is only going to be for two months. This will only be for two weeks. Well, we'll, we'll get on with this. And the brain doesn't go into no. You can't train now. You can't do what you've been doing for twenty years now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Are we clear with that? And it was, oh man. So again, the positive mindset, the positive energy is a massive thing that I've been trying to push uh, daily. How do you, how do you see that when you, you know, with what you're responsible with and what you do as well? Yeah, I think it, it's, it, there is, I, I felt at least a, an extreme sense of responsibility. Like it was almost like a, a like a calling or a mission yes yes <laughs> you know it, it, it got me more excited and more passionate indeed to, you know like i guess to to bring people together and and that's mm. that's always what happens we see in hardships 
But um, I think this is a little bit different because we do see the worst in people mm. and we do see the best in people. Um, and that's just based on, you know, I think their training and their, you know, yeah. the, the vibe that they carry as a, a patterned response. Of course. Um, and, and, and looking at causation cycles and karma and, yes. you, know, how, oh, like, yes. you know, having to, how do you adapt in those circumstances? Um, if you do run your thing like a business, then your business will, will probably really collapse. But if there's a bigger mission right. behind it, then the mission is unconditional. Correct. Correct. You know, you're not doing it based on, oh, like, you know, looking at the, the, the conditions of the month. No, the yeah. The, 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 yeah. It, it's it, You just said it. It's much bigger. If it's much bigger than just being here, if you think it's just here, well, then, yeah, you're in a bit of strife. But if you're looking greater and bigger and, and putting more, you know, uh, to, you know, as they say, you know, uh, putting it out to the universe as such, you have a bigger and stronger will to what mm -hmm. what is just there. Is that right? right? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's It's been unbelievable. And I mean, you know, I've seen it with some of your podcasts as well. Um, and they've been great in just deep diving again and, and respectfully, you know, tapping into the other side of not just the, uh, the the awesomeness of, you know, what you can do on the mat. There has to be that yin yang balance. And, you know, I definitely see that with you and I respect that a lot. And because it gives another level for me when I see some of the things that you've been doing in appreciating what the art has given us. The art has given us so much already, but that's not just it. Now it's time to share. Now it's time to acknowledge. Now it's time to look into, and I, I kind of uh, share the analogy, Kancho, with respect of Stranger Things. Have you seen the uh, Netflix, um, on, on Netflix, it's called Stranger Things. Have you seen that show? <laughs> uh, for, the, for the listeners out there with Stranger Things, there is normal life, normal life. It's based, you know, there's normal life, but then there is a uh, alienation type scenario that occurs and you go into a wall and it takes you through to another world and it's upside down. And it's just, you know, and I feel that has occurred in my um my part of my martial arts how, how do you you know where have you seen you know how martial arts sits with you and and for so long that you've done it for are you you know trying uh, well, what's the word it's not uh revolutionize or recreate the wheel but how do you continue to to learn progress uh keep going where do you see that within what you're doing or who are you looking at in doing you know in getting better every time because that is the goal right or, or you know yeah definitely I think it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm really, I look to the future. Right. And it's, you know, the next generation mm. um, is the fuel and taking an altruistic mindset awesome. with the next generation. The past comes in to support us. Like, awesome. almost like I want to use the word ancestry. And I've been doing a lot of ancestral things. Um, oh, cool. We've had a lot of periods quite recently where there was a lot of ancestral downloads happening right. um, in different ways. And I think the, the sensitivity to you know, understand what our ancestors want um, and how they want that to, to go forward, it's almost yep. like we're getting supported on a much deeper level of healing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. when we see how to use it for the next generation like yeah indeed for their for their education mm -hmm. for their uh you know their health mm -hmm. for their wellness all of these kinds of things is is um it's really turning the structures upside down yeah um, health, yes. healthcare system the education system yeah uh, these are really huge um factors that will be that I, I believe are shifting yeah game changing at the minute aren't they yes yeah yeah so yeah we created a, a non-profit about four years ago called okay awaken. what's and it called this, sorry, Cunt? sorry what was it called awaken.site okay and we created this about four years ago with the mindset of creating a school and a school that teaches uh, martial arts uh, in addition to subjects but the subjects it's more 
not teaching the tools, but the mindset behind it and making sure that they're using it in a correct, yeah, like a moral compass kind of thing. Because I yeah, believe that that's where things get kind of mm, uh, tarnished in a way because we're mm. teaching tools, but the wrong mindset. And so, yeah. okay, you can get this done, but at the cost of this, <laughs> it's, you know, that's where a lot of, that's where we see this total yep, upside down. Yeah. 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 Oh, indeed. Oh, that's, that's cool. So how is that going? Well, you know, four years in, how's that going? How, how, what, what can we do to support it as yeah. such? It's, um, it's powerful. We, we have a group of teens that have been with us since they were little, Fantastic. Um, you know, during the pandemic, we went deeper with them. We, mm. We've gotten them in touch with mentors to teach that like, Hey, what is your skill set? Mm -hmm. We can find out what their skill set is, um, kind of like hidden talents. And then we were able to make them aware of those talents and then give them guidance wow. to cool. actually go. And we put them into a shark tank. Oh, and cool. They presented their ideas, their proposal to the shark tank. And they actually got money that we secured as a nonprofit to go out and do this. That's, um, that's awesome. So yeah, yeah is... putting martial arts, I believe, to um, that's how it, it's you know, that's like a fight, you know, you're teaching them yeah. this and then go out and do it. Um, and they got more passionate about learning, right? Listen, you know, I, I don't know, like, um, I, I, I just know that what we're doing is it feels good, oh. the kids, it feels good, <laughs> and um. You know, I think if we educate at least one person and that person makes a profound impact, impact yes, right? of course. You know, I don't, you know, I, I'll be forgotten and this this person will go to, to no. carry. Yeah, no, that's that's a great, great thing you're doing. Well done to you and your team there that have that have uh, that have got that going. We've got to check that out, listeners, and, and support that indeed. That that's really cool to hear that you've um you've done that. You've inspired me a little there. That's great. You know, um how how are things, I guess moving forward for for yourself and for Enshin and for I, I i guess you can see you know you and i've had a chat but in respect of you know um i found a window here to do the kilkshin shuffle on a podcast level you know uh the the platforms as such here in australia to recognize and highlight uh students teachers uh masters is is null and void as such you know publications was a thing that was leading the way for many of the profile figures to be highlighted but that's no longer and you know uh you've got a podcast as well how how you know i guess the angle for me to just hear what, what you're doing I, you know, I'm, I'm doing a, an ebook called forever the student and that's uh, i've asked the guests that have been on my, on my podcast uh you know 13 odd questions and then that book you know they've answered it which has just blown everyone it's blown me away with their answers you know such such powerful leaders, great community people, um, you know, such invaluable experiences, you know, and, and all of that inspires me, motivates me. Is there some, what, what's the angle that you have for yourself and what you're trying to continue to pursue? You know, again, is, is there anything of that capacity? Because I saw the great work you did with the Black Belt magazine and, and how you're profiling Enshin so strong around the world. I think, you know, I, um, I, I just, I'm so happy, like what Enshin does and everything, the work that it does. And mm. I think it's just that um, excitement. And I, I don't, you know, it's, 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 it can't be contained. So I just have to kind of find <laughs> things to do. And, and, yeah. and it's yeah. exciting. Like I like, yeah. you know, it's spending time with people like yourself and you know, just it's, it's, it's genuine communications. Mm. And, um, you know, that's what Enshin is about is heart of the circle. Unreal. And so yes. when I do my podcast, I, I don't know who watches it, you know, I don't know what we're going to, like, like yourself, I don't know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> no, like no. Being in the moment, and, um, you know, being positive. And um, so, I, like I said, it, I have some indications of where the future is. Right. But, um, you know, letting my own, my passion uh, lead, lead, lead the way. Yes. Um, and again, it's like making sure it's serving the next generation. Yeah, indeed. For me, that's that's the that's the huge teaching. 
because then it becomes um, void of time. Like, like I kind of said, when, 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 when we die, our, our form leaves mm -hmm. um, and a part of it wants to return back to form to do something of service. Um, of course. You know, and, and likewise, when we have these profound moments, mm. we, we're going outside of ourselves only re to return back to ourself and want to give yeah. that, uh, excitement back or the passion, you know. So I think it's, it's, it's learning to keep in the rhythm right. of being passionate and like, you know, kind of giving and receiving on that level. Yes, 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 yes. Keep That's learning. A good one sharing and yeah i I'm, i've i've found that in the past year of doing this the podcast i again I, I had put it in a position to share knowledge i felt that uh i got to a moment where uh i'm fortunate to have a, a she my shian six dan who has a whole wealth of knowledge but we've 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 tapped into that for 20 years as such and there was just so many other teachers and students and we all have the same i guess loyalty to staying with our dojo, training in the same facility, academy, same teachers, same voices as such, but there's so much more out there. And in a sales corporate, and I was in a uh, professional sport environment, that's all we used to do. We used to tap into other people and get in and have a talk from someone else or listen to this person talk to you about how to get better at things. Oh, he's, and it was just so much. And then I'm like, why aren't we doing this or who is doing something like this in, in martial arts in, as, as a total? Kyokushin is what it was for me as a platform. But, you know, to have the opportunity to talk to someone like you, there was no way in the world I would have thought of that, you know, six, six to 12 months ago. So to, to, to be able to talk to you and, and for the listeners and for many of us to understand you a little bit more, I truly appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, for everyone out there, you know, thank you so much for your time. It was such an honor to talk to you. Um, keep doing such a fantastic job from your end. Um, I love seeing what you're doing with the Black Belt magazine. That was awesome too. You know, um, I'll put some of the links up, guys and girls, for everyone to just start to see. And again, try and I, I use the terminology, just get a nugget. And how much golden nuggets has uh, Fukuoka Country given us today? Fantastic. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Us, such a pleasure. Us, everyone, have a good week. Take care.